My story is from when I was growing up at my parents' house in Burton, Michigan. Since I was about seven or eight, all the way up until I moved out, I witnessed several odd occurrences. My dad was an over-the-road truck driver, so I was home with my mom most of the time. Weird things that have happened include tapping on the walls, voices, being touched, feeling like you're being watched, and even a full-on person that disappeared in front of me. There have been several instances where I, and my friends who I have never told this to, have heard chunks of conversation coming from other rooms or downstairs. When I went to investigate, it would immediately stop. I was home alone, the TV was off, and the windows were closed. There have been a few other events, such as tapping on walls, door shutting, and very clear footsteps walking along the hardwood floors. Once, they even went past me so close that I could feel it in the floorboards. The creepiest thing was one day a friend and I were down in the basement, which consisted of a large family room, a laundry room, and my dad's workout room. The door to the workout room did not have a doorknob since they were refinishing the house. There was only a hole in the door for one. I don't remember why, but my friend and I looked through the hole and clearly saw a man sitting on a weight bench. She thought it was my dad. We didn't think anything of it until shortly after at dinner when I asked my dad why he wasn't at the table. I then learned that he was a few states away out on the road still. I had thought he came home. I told my mom and she immediately called the police thinking that there should have been someone in the house. She said she heard commotion in that room earlier in the day but she thought it was us. There was no sign of anyone being in there. Another creepy thing happened in the basement. Some friends and I were in the family room playing Nintendo 64, and clear as day, a man walked right past the double sliding laundry room doors. The room is like 30 by 8 and has a set of the bifold closet doors as an entrance. Almost all of my friends saw this. The man walked past, and right before he was out of sight, turned toward the wall and made a motion like he was opening a refrigerator door and putting something in. He then walked out of sight. We went in there to see who the hell it was and there was nobody there. I have been living on the other side of the state for three years, but my mom still lives there and is most of the time alone with the dog since my dad is still on the road a lot. She says that she still hears the conversations and the footsteps quite often and has seen the guy in the basement twice. I'm skeptical, but honestly, I don't know what to make of it. There have been multiple witnesses, and I've tried to debunk everything, but I just don't know how to explain it. A few weeks ago, I was talking to my mom. It was a Monday night, and she looked pretty tired, so I asked her what was up. She told me that the night before, at about 5 in the morning, she was woken by the sensation of being watched. She had her back to the wall, but she felt as though someone was behind her, laying in the bed with her. She felt a cold chill and was paralyzed with fear. After a few minutes, she finally convinced herself to look. Of course, there was nothing there, but it took her quite a while to fall back asleep. The funny thing is, at the same time in my room in the basement, which is nowhere near her, so her moving would not have woken me up, I was awoken by a sound, so I sat up to look, and there was a man standing at the end of my bed. Of course, it scared me so much, within a second I flung my covers off to sit up, but he was gone. There's a chair at the end of my bed, with no space to stand, and he couldn't have been that tall while sitting. We were both spooked. Today, I was sitting alone in my basement working on homework, and someone ran their fingers through my hair. I'm pretty sure our house is haunted. I grew up in several haunted houses. Even now, we have an entity in our kitchen who we jokingly call the fridge ghost, as it likes to hang out by the fridge and occasionally open it in the middle of the night. But for now, I'm going to talk about a house I lived in until middle school. It's located on a street called Cherry, 
which my friends and I always joked about for obvious reasons. However, nothing about the feeling I had when I lived in that house with my family was anything to joke about. My friends never wanted to spend the night at the house I grew up in. All of them had the same bad feeling staying there. This sinking feeling that formed in the pit of their stomachs before something would happen. And unusual things inevitably would, more often than not. Doors would regularly open and close on their own, and this was something that I had chalked up to the tilt in the foundation, at least at first. But when you hear your doors, cabinets, doors leading to the house, essentially anything with a hinge, slam in the middle of the night, you start to question if it's just regular house noises. The windows would open and shut on their own as well, which is a little harder to pin on a shifting foundation. There were a couple of times that the televisions would turn on and off on their own. Sometimes the volume on the TV sets would go up and down as well, and there were other times the channels would show up on the television sets that I've never seen. I could probably blame the odd television behavior on magnetism, or the fact that both television sets were quite old. However, the strange things I would see on those off channels through the static are enough to convince me that there might have been something else going on there. I would often hear noises in the vents, like things were crawling around in them. Sometimes it sounded like bodies were being dragged through the ventilation shafts, Sometimes I would hear scratching on the walls or the windows or other out of the ordinary sounds like footsteps on the floor when no one else was there. My mom used to tell me that it was little woodland creatures who got into the insides of the walls, but I never saw these animals. The closest I came to seeing anything close to that was one family of skunks we found living under our porch. But after moving them out safely to the woods, we never saw any other animals that could account for making the types of noises I was hearing. Sometimes I heard whispering, and other times I heard yelling, like a faint cry through the walls. There were other times I would find weird yellow liquid on the walls or other similar substances. My mom used to tell me it was mold and not to touch it until she could clean it, but it didn't look like any mold I've ever seen. It didn't look like any of those substances could be made by anything living. I would also see ghostly figures wandering through the house. When I was young, I used to talk in great detail with what I think was a child female entity. It was more like a one-way conversation with the entity, although sometimes it would answer in its own way. I wrote an essay about my friendship with that ghost for one of my classes later on and submitted it as fiction so the teacher wouldn't think I was crazy. But the truth is that my friendship with that ghost and some of the other presences was very real. Of course, there was the typical haunting stuff too. Objects being thrown, pulled, or just simply going missing altogether. I used to joke with my mom that the wall trolls or house gnomes had made off with our stuff, to which she would just roll her eyes. When my mom started seeing some strange entities peering at us through the windows, or as we were sleeping, she started to take my stories a little more seriously. She won't agree with everything I have claimed to see in that house, but she will definitely admit that there were presences that would appear. I often saw toys come to life, including a doll my aunt had brought me back from Russia. I had a dream that the doll was trying to kill me by choking me to death. When I woke up, the doll was sleeping next to me in my bed. No one had ever moved it there that night. I ended up blessing the doll and throwing it away. To this day I don't like dolls and I won't sleep in the same room with one. I remember that the landlord who lived in the house next door was always asking us how things were going there. My mom told me to keep quiet about the things we saw because the rent was cheap and she didn't want to upset her. But even though I never got any direct answers from the landlord, I could see by her behavior that she must have known something was off with the house. Perhaps the strangest thing was that the house didn't particularly have a dark past or a history attached that would make it stand out as a hub for spiritual activity. The landlord was cranky and her attitude could have contributed to the overall negative energy. But other than that, we never knew what in particular made the house so haunted. 
I didn't exclusively see evil entities in the house either. Like I said, I made some friendships with the ghosts. And I even saw other entities, what I can only describe to be little people and entities that looked like what people say greys are, but they weren't aliens. This leads me to believe that the house was built on top of some kind of ley line or portal that opened up into other realms. Maybe instead of a haunted house, we just had a house with a gateway. I'm not sorry that I had the experiences that I did. In fact, I think it broadened my horizons and showed me from an early age that there's more to the world than what we can physically see. I will always think of the friendships I formed with the spirits and other entities fondly. For some people, my experience might have a rational explanation, and that's fine. I've always had an open mind, and I'm happy to listen to many sides of an argument. But for me, the experiences I had in this house growing up were tangible, and not just the imagination of an elementary school kid. They are something that has colored my view of this beautiful and mysterious world and has opened my eyes to all kinds of realms of possibility. I've had some crazy things happen to me at my house. My neighborhood sits on top of a Native American burial ground. There are even some ruins and a burial mound in my friend's backyard, literally. Also, there was a revolutionary war battle about a mile down the street. Fun stuff, right? Ever since I moved into that house with my parents about 13 years ago, I was 4, my little brother was around 1, now I'm 17 and he's 14. A lot has happened. My brother, who was 6 at the time of the story, used to run around the house claiming to be chased by a monster. My mom and I were sitting on the couch one day and he was standing in front of the TV, but then he started shaking and ran to my mom and sat on her lap. He said that a lady tapped him on the shoulder and asked if she could speak with his father. You could bet my mom picked up both of us like footballs, got in the car as fast as possible, and went to my grandma's. For the longest time after that, though, things had been quiet. If something happened, it was very minor. Within the last five years, however, things have really kicked up again. For example, once I was standing in the kitchen at around age 13, I was staring out the window and I heard my name whispered in my ear really softly. I remember saying, yeah mom, only to look and see her fast asleep on the couch in the next room. Another time at around 3 in the afternoon, while I was home alone with my brother who was napping upstairs, I heard a knock on the door and a couple of kids giggle pretty loudly. I answered the door right away, too fast for them to have run off, but no one was there. My mom heard a loud crash once and the little kid giggle while in the living room. She ran into the kitchen to call my dad and tell him about it. While she was in the kitchen, the garbage can lid started swinging. My dad, who's never experienced anything paranormal until last month, was working in the garage. The cap that keeps the air inside of a bike was thrown at him from across the room. I don't know why all of a sudden these things just started happening, out of nowhere after all these years of silence. My mom runs around the house with holy water after every experience because she's scared that it's going to hurt someone. I kind of doubt that, it's never hurt anybody before. It's only given us inconveniences and scared us, but I guess anything is possible. Does anyone have any explanation? So, a few months back, I moved into this beautiful two-story house with my mother, and we had a roommate with two kids in a great neighborhood. The price was suspiciously cheap, but at the time, we didn't think twice about the price. Anyway, the first night was a little creepy. I thought I heard footsteps coming up the stairs. My mom was close to the stairs on the second floor, so I always heard who comes up and down, but... I just dismissed it, thinking it was just the house settling, as they say. Plus, I thought to myself, people always get a creepy vibe the first night they move into a new place, right? So after a few tosses and turns, I eventually fell asleep. Now this was the first night, and the next encounter didn't happen for a few weeks, but this definitely got everyone in the house spooked. 
That night after work, I came home, happy that I had the next day off. So as soon as I got home, I got ready to play a game. As I sat down, I felt this presence in the room. But it was only me, and it literally felt like something evil was looking directly at me. I felt drained, but at the time, I didn't think much of it. Looking back on it now, it was almost like something was stealing my energy or feeding off of it. But as normal, I dismissed it and went to go ask my roommate if she wanted to smoke, and she said yes. So we went outside, and we were talking for a good bit. But out of nowhere, she brought up how she felt about the house. Then she told me what happened to her earlier that day. She told me that when she came outside to smoke as she was sitting on the stairs, which is where we always smoked, she happened to turn, and she saw the blinds from our living room open. She saw a figure looking directly at her, but when she turned to get a better look, it vanished. She said she didn't go back into the house for a few hours, but when she did, nothing was there. To me, it seemed like nothing. I honestly thought she was just seeing things. But we both felt like there was always something watching us. This is when things get a little scary. About a week or two passed, and my roommate and I were down in the basement smoking because it was snowing outside. We finished up, and then her two kids wanted to play, so we both stayed downstairs and watched the kids play. We were sitting a good bit away from the stairs when we saw her youngest son look up the stairs. The creepy thing is the way he turned and made it look like somebody had called him. Mind you, we were both looking at him at this time, so when he turns, he then slowly looks up the stairs as if he was trying to make out what he was looking at. As soon as his head stops, I'm assuming that's when he saw whatever it was he saw, and he started crying, like literally bawling. When his mother called his name, he just smiled and ran towards her. From our point of view, we couldn't see up the stairs because there was a wall covering it. But we know he saw something. That's when we knew the house was probably haunted. Since she was home more than I was, and more than my mother was, she had stories about doors being opened that were originally closed. You know, the normal haunting stories. But now we started to believe her even more. My mother said she started to feel depressed whenever she got home. This was the scariest thing that happened to me personally. We were moving, and at first everything was going smoothly. I was packing up the living room, and my mother was packing up her room. The roommate had already moved out, so it was just the two of us. After a few minutes of moving, I heard a loud bang. It was as if a bowling ball had fallen off of a countertop. It came from upstairs. So I went to go check it out. Nothing fell. Nothing was on the ground anywhere. My mom and I were pretty spooked, so we left to get some extra boxes and then we came back. When we got back, it was nighttime, and I went upstairs to pack up the kitchen. As I was doing so, I heard this loud, demonic screeching sound. I know it sounds far-fetched, but it's true. At the time, I didn't think much of it. In my head, I knew it came from in the area I was in, but when you're in a situation like that, sometimes defenses take over and you just try to brush it off. So I brushed it off. Thought it was just a car from outside that had a bad break or had to break hard. Anything other than what I'd actually heard. I proceeded to pack the kitchen. When I opened the cabinet, I heard the loud bang again. So I looked around. And then I looked back into the cabinet, proceeding to close it and run downstairs. Literally nothing had fallen in that room. I was running downstairs when I heard the screech again. But this time, it came from inside the cabinet. I was still close enough to tell. It was almost like I felt a gust of wind blow past my head at that point. And I swear it felt like something went through my forehead. It felt like a punch. It wasn't like a fist punch, but like an energetic punch. It didn't hurt, it was more like a force that went through my body that I could physically feel. I booked it downstairs and told my mom what happened. Needless to say, we moved a lot faster than expected. If anyone has any experience with this stuff, please tell me what really happened to us. I always find it kind of odd, ghosts and demons and stuff like that. 
but maybe they are real. Something clearly was going on at that house. I just wish I knew what it was. As a kid, I was a huge fan of the paranormal, mostly due to my love for movies like Ghostbusters, but never in my life did I think that I would live in an actual haunted house, or in my case, a haunted mobile home. This all started when I was around four years old. We lived in a pretty nice mobile home. Growing up, my aunt would babysit us, as both of my parents worked crazy hours to support our family of five. Before we went to sleep, my aunt had a habit of telling us ghost stories. One night, as my paternal grandmother was visiting from Puerto Rico, my parents moved my twin and I to the living room, as my grandmother claimed our room for the night. I was already creeped out about sleeping in the living room, which was pitch black. What made it worse was that they decided to put the cup with my grandmother's dentures next to the sofa. Having a very overactive imagination, I started to scare myself with ideas of what those teeth could do to me in the night. I struggled to go to sleep as my youngest sister, who was about three months old, was getting fussy and not wanting to sleep herself. On what took my mom a while, she finally got my sister to sleep before 10pm. I was relieved, and then I went back to trying to get some sleep myself. As the night progressed, I was sound asleep until I was awoken by the noise. I didn't know what it was at first, and then I realized it was a girl laughing. Scared out of my wits, I hid under the blanket. I heard the laughing get louder and closer. I shook in fear and attempted to look up but I heard the girl run away from me and start running all over the living room and into my baby sister's room. It was then that I heard my baby sister crying hysterically. I heard the laugh through all of the crying. I just laid on the sofa, trembling in fear as I heard both the laughter and the crying. Merged together, it was truly eerie. A few moments later, I heard running, and this time it was my mom getting up to get my sister and take her to the master bedroom on the other side of the trailer. I don't know how I did it, but I did manage to go back to sleep. The following morning, I asked my mom about it, and she told me she was getting that trailer blessed by a priest. A priest did come, and all of the activity stopped, or so we thought. After the first incident, I started elementary school. I became a very avid reader as my now late maternal grandfather had gotten us to start reading at a very young age. I would read books on ghosts every chance I had, which I actually still do. Nearly two years after my first encounter with the ghost, my little brother was born. Everything had been okay, and that's when it started again. Around this time, I wasn't sleeping in the living room, but I could still hear the running from my bedroom. The reason being that the nursery was in the room next to the room that I shared with my twin. I started sleeping with the radio on just so I could avoid hearing that ghost running and laughing. One day I was told to shower as I had gotten pretty dirty from jumping into all the puddles outside. I heard my mom say that she was taking my siblings with her to the store and she'd be right back. The store was just two blocks away so I figured it would be about 10 to 15 minutes to shower. I was singing in the shower, and then I heard that laugh. It scared me, as I had only ever heard that laugh at night and when one of my siblings was around. I immediately shut off the water, got a towel, and went for the doorknob. I kept trying to open the door, but I couldn't. It was jammed. I started crying, and the ghost started pounding on the door and laughing at me. It seemed to have gone on for a while, until, as suddenly as it started, it stopped. I then heard my mom call my name. She very easily opened the door and saw me on the ground sobbing. I had told her what happened and she yet again called another priest to come and bless the trailer. Nothing happened there after that last blessing since we moved about six months later. I don't know what's going on there now though. The whole experience is a big reason that I usually shower with my door open halfway now. I also recently looked up the history of that neighborhood. As typical as it sounds, it seems that the area where I lived was at one point a makeshift cemetery before our city had an official cemetery. 
Our trailer had been positioned on top of the grave of a little girl. The whole neighborhood is known for a lot of hauntings. Sometimes I wonder if they removed the bodies or not, but I'll never know as it seems the trailer I lived in was moved and it's now a garden and parking spot for a house that was built on the lot next door. I've had many paranormal experiences, but I thought I'd share this one in particular. My mother-in-law died quite unexpectedly during Christmas in 2013. She was in a coma for about a week before she died. She lived in a senior living community in Southern California called Laguna Woods. While my mother-in-law was in the hospital and following her death, my husband, one-year-old son, and I stayed at her place. At the time, we lived in Texas, but we're from Southern California, and all of our family are here too. One of my first experiences was in the middle of the night. I picked up my son out of his pack and play because he was crying. I held him as I walked to the living room to sit on the recliner and rock him. I didn't turn on any lights, as there was enough ambient light to see. Just as I was about to sit on the recliner, I was startled, because it looked like someone was already sitting there. I immediately stood back up because of my natural reaction of thinking somebody was already there. It sure did give my heart a jump. From about then on, I felt a presence. It didn't scare me, but I was definitely aware of it. I don't believe it was my mother-in-law. I believe it may have been a previous owner. I felt that it was probably a woman, but sometimes it felt like a man. So my mother-in-law's death brought together some of my husband's family who had been estranged. My husband's uncle has an adult son with whom they had a falling out for several years. Word of my mother-in-law's passing got to the estranged son, which is a cousin of my husband, and he showed up at the memorial and surprised his family. They had a positive and emotional reunion. He only stayed for the memorial and then left for home. After the memorial, my husband's side of the family and I went back to my mother-in-law's house for an after-party visit sort of thing. They stayed for several hours and it was a great reunion. We ordered pizza and I called my sister, who lived in the neighborhood, to come over. She came and socialized and it was nice. Nothing remarkable happened until the next day. So my sister calls me the next day to catch up and see how we're doing, and we talk about the previous day and night's events. She commented on how nice it was to see my husband's family, and how great it was that my husband's uncle reconciled with his son. She added that it was so nice that the son had come over to the house afterward. I said he didn't come over. He went home immediately after the memorial. My sister said, really? I could swear he was there. I explained that the only men present were my husband, his uncle, and an older cousin. My sister said she saw a man, maybe in his early to late thirties wearing khaki pants and a sweater vest, standing between the living room and kitchen. She said she made eye contact with him a couple of times, and he smiled. She said he looked like he was listening and observing the conversations that were going on in the kitchen and living room, but he wasn't talking to anyone. She said her intention was to go and chat with him, thinking that it was the formerly estranged son, but was caught up in conversation with other relatives. She said that when she was finally free to go and chat, she couldn't find him anywhere. She didn't think anything of it at the time, she figured he just left. Since I already had an experience with the recliner sitting person, this made my blood run cold and honestly gave me the chills. Eventually, my husband had to return to Texas to work. My son and I stayed in California for a few weeks to clean out my mother-in-law's house. It was during my stay that more weird things happened. One night, I was lying in bed reading, when I felt someone watching me from the hallway. My body had its own reaction to the presence that I couldn't control. I felt anxious, but not scared. Just that I knew someone was in the house besides me and my son was an eerie feeling. I finally made a deal with the ghost or ghosts. I said, Listen, I know you're here, and that's okay. 
Just don't scare or harm me or my son. Otherwise, you're welcome to stay. I can't recall the exact timeline, but one morning I found my one-year-old son completely unclothed in his pack and play. He had never, ever removed his clothing before this, and he's never done it since. Even his diaper was missing. At the time, I thought it was some new phase with him taking off his clothes, but he never did it again. Not even a sock. I truly believe some entity was responsible. It was just too out of his character to take off all of his clothes. Again, I reiterated our commands to the ghosts. You're welcome here, just don't scare or harm me or my son. I had help from my family packing away items that we wanted to keep. During this time, another sister of mine came from the hallway and said that she smelled perfume strongly in the hallway, like Chanel No. 5. There were only three of us at the house that day, and all of us were working together in the kitchen. No one had been in the hallway, other than to pass through to get to the restroom. I smelled the perfume a couple of times, too, on different occasions. My mother-in-law had all kinds of aversions, and I never knew her to wear perfume, so I didn't think it was her spirit. Also, during this packing day, I was packing up her china from the china cabinet, and I suddenly got an overwhelming scent of body odor. I even did a pit check of myself, and it wasn't me. I did a covert sniff of my sister and friend helping me that day, and they didn't smell like it either. I was hesitant to tell them, but then I just had them come over to the china cabinet area and ask if they smelled anything. They both said B.O., and it wasn't any of us. I just chalked it up to another spirit encounter. Another time, I was getting ready to host the estate sale in the house. Everything was prepped and ready for a 7 a.m. start time the next day. As part of the setup, I had my mother-in-law's shoes neatly displayed on a shoe rack in the master bedroom just a few feet from the side of the bed that I was sleeping in. I got up that morning and showered. Nothing was amiss. When I came back into the room, the racked shoes were on the floor next to the bed that I had just woken up from. The rack was still in place properly. It's just that now all of the shoes were on the floor. I froze in place when I entered the room and saw the shoes. I was like, what the hell is going on here? There's no way they could have just fallen over by themselves and then been neatly placed there. They had been squarely placed on the rack the night before. I would have had to step over them to get out of bed. Additionally, some of the shoes were far from the rack. Even if they had fallen, there's no way they could have rolled that far. And it wasn't my son, because I immediately checked on him, and he was still sound asleep in his pack-and-play in a completely different room. Fast forward to later in the day of the estate sale. Another couple of friends came over to help me. After a busy morning, we had a lull in the afternoon. We tidied up a bit and put things back in place that had been handled by shoppers. We took a break and sat on the porch and chatted while we enjoyed the lull. I recounted to my friends about how I thought the house was haunted. One friend was really spooked when I told her about the perfume. She said that she too smelled it in the hallway earlier that morning. She said that she was walking behind a man in the hallway and she had an overwhelming scent of perfume. She thought it was odd that a man would be wearing such strong women's perfume. I said, well, you've met my ghost. Now for the really freaky stuff. So after I recounted all the incidents above to my friends during our break, I did a walk around of the house just to double check that things were in order for the next round of shoppers. I go into the master bedroom and the frigging shoes are on the floor again. I screamed this time. My friends came running to see what happened. They saw the shoes and they were like, you're messing with us. I said, I swear to God, I'm not messing with you. These shoes were not on the floor before. When we tidied up, I re-racked all of them. And the shoes were almost in the same exact position that they had been in that morning when I found them on the floor after my shower. Freaky, man. We eventually sold the house. I asked the realtor if there was a disclosure law for haunted houses. She said she's never heard of such a thing. I told her about how I thought the house was haunted, but she probably just thought I was crazy. Either way, I definitely experienced some paranormal activity there. 
and I would be so curious to find out if the new owners did as well. So, my family moved into the house in question in 1999. I was five at the time. The house isn't too old, built in the 70s, and I live in a very small community. So as far as I know, nothing bad ever happened there. Just to give you a quick layout of the house. When you come in the front door, to the left is a hallway, and the last door on the left is my bedroom. But there is a bathroom at the very end of the hallway. And the way the house was laid out is such that whenever the bathroom door is open, the mirror reflects back down the hall toward you. Things only happened after the sun went down. Ever since I was young, I would always wake up in the middle of the night either thirsty or hungry, so I would go to the kitchen to make a snack. While walking back to my room down the hall, I would always feel something right behind me, reaching trying to grab a hold of me, which of course forced me to speed walk or light sprint back to my room, where I would sit quietly trying to calm my heart. Whenever the bathroom door is open though, and you could see your reflection in the hall, I never felt like I was being followed, but I would see shadows running around behind me and peeking their heads out around the corner like they didn't want to be seen. Shortly after we moved in, we got a dog, since then we always had dogs in the house. We've had three in total, and most of the time, if I was ever home alone, they would come and hang out with me. And every dog, even to this day, will occasionally just stare at my bedroom door that leads to the hall, or even snarl at it. Fast forward a few years to 17 to 18 year old me, I'm working a part-time retail job where I keep the keys to the store. On some occasions I had the mornings off, and someone would need the keys to open so I left them in the mailbox outside my front door just so I wouldn't have to wake up early. It happened on two occasions where my coworker John would come to get the keys in the morning, and as he was getting back in the car, he would see somebody staring at him through my dad's bedroom window, which was the room next to mine. John stared at him for a few minutes and waved a little, but the figure didn't move or react. He would just look down to start his car, look back up, and the figure would be totally gone. He described the figure as a wrinkled old man with a bald head. Nobody in my family has ever matched that description, and at the time, my entire family had left for work, and I was still sound asleep in bed. I'm also not an old man. John had refused to ever go back to get the keys again after that. I don't know how many entities I have in my home, and though I have an uneasiness and nervous feeling, I never felt outright threatened, until one day. I was 22 at the time, I was just in the basement getting laundry on a normal day. Nothing was off, nothing felt weird, it was 100% normal. I was finished folding all my clothes, so I went to carry them upstairs to my bedroom. And as I was climbing the stairs, I heard loud stomping coming from behind me, down the hallway where the laundry room was. Then they sped up, as if somebody was running full sprint toward me. I spun around, and I saw this black figure round the corner and barrel up the stairs. It made it to within an inch of my face, and then disappeared. I almost shot myself. I've never felt such anger and malice in my whole life. I ran to my bedroom, slammed the door, and just sat there in silence, listening for any bit of movement at all, but it was completely still. Those are the experiences that I've had so far. I can only guess what might come next, but I think it's safe to say I definitely live in a haunted house. About 10 years ago, my mom, two sisters, and I, and another small family that we were friends with, took a short trip to Northumberland. It's not too far from Alnwick Castle, where the first and second Harry Potter films were shot. My dad, and the father of the other family, had to work, so it was just our two moms and us seven children, aged between 5 and 15 years old. Because the other family was quite wealthy, and we were not, 
They paid for the accommodation, which turned out to be an old country house built in the late 1700s, Newton Hall. It has since been stylishly refurbished into a wedding venue, but was then an eerie and isolated shadow of its 19th century preoccupants. I remember us all being shuffled through dark wood paneled passages into a large staircase lined with old portraits. We joked about it being like Hogwarts, the portraits' as grim inhabitants with their eyes alive and moving, following us as we climbed the stairs. What was first a joke soon became a genuine concern in the following couple of days. As a side note, I'm still amazed at how we had the whole place to ourselves. Me being young then and not fully appreciating what the cost must have been to rent it out, my mom still claims it was because there were no more holiday rentals available in the area during summer, implying that this grand hall was a sort of last resort, but I don't think so. Anyway. In addition to the creepy paintings, there was a huge Native American style totem pole with its garish peeling paint and beady eyes glaring from multiple heads. This stood watch on the landing of the second floor. In a so-called playroom were various animal heads mounted on the walls, and in the tall corridors on the ground floor were benches, their legs fashioned from a brutal mesh of deer antlers. It was the benches that were the first cause for alarm. On the first morning, upon waking up, we noticed that one or two of these benches had moved a few inches from their proper placement at the wall's edge. However, this strange but subtle event was not given any thought, at least until the next morning when it happened again. I remember distinctly that the blame was put to the eldest of the seven children, Michael, who had a sort of mischievous manner about him but he denied it. This physical disturbance in the already extremely scary house was enough to make us sleep in pairs. I remember that my older sister and I were taking turns sleeping on the side of the bed that faced the wall, rather than be exposed to anything that might come in the night. Only one other thing happened that seemed poignant enough for me to remember now. Three of the girls developed some kind of rash while we stayed at the hall. The doctor diagnosed it as empedigo, an infectious skin rash which explains the coincidence. However, the cause still remains completely ambiguous and was never discovered. I don't know if it was a natural infection or something more sinister. Either way, the home was the scene of one of the creepiest things I've ever experienced, before or since, and I genuinely hope to not experience anything like that again. In Thessaloniki, Greece, several people consider a certain house to be very haunted. The house was said to have been the mansion of its previous owner, and today it has not been inhabited since it's dilapidated and the surrounding area has been transformed into a warehouse for building materials. It's rumored that those who have stayed there at night have heard terrible noises from ghosts roaming in the rooms, making them flee in terror. It is also said that the previous owner's building is accompanied by a curse that he put on it, and that anyone who lives there is in danger of going mad, and anyone who tries to demolish it is in danger of dying. In the past, two contractors decided to demolish it, but on the day of the planned demolition, they suddenly died. One died from a heart attack, and the other was killed in a traffic accident in Athens. I don't have any personal experience with this house, but I don't think I want any. When I was a little girl of about 10 or so, I would always go shopping with my aunt for my birthday, but this particular time was a little different. She wanted me to stay the night and then go shopping the next day. I agreed to do this because who doesn't love going shopping with your aunt as a kid? I was always creeped out by her house for the longest time before I stayed that night. My dad and brother have had experiences before me. They always camped out in the backyard in the woods. She had a big place, a house, a barn, a pool, even a pond, and lots of land. Sounds perfect, right? 
Anyway, they said that they saw a fog surrounding the house. Not the barn or anything else, but just the house. Creepy. And they also heard things in the woods, too. Yes, I am thinking what you're thinking, it was most likely animals. The fog was harder to explain. Either way, I figured that they were just trying to scare me, so I didn't think too much of it when the opportunity to stay there at night came up. Let's get on to that experience. I was up in the bedroom, right at the top of the stairs. If you walked straight up the stairs, you could walk straight into the bedroom. The catch to the bedroom is that it had a baby gate on it, so it was very hard to get in and out quickly. There was a home office to the left of the stairs, and then to the right, there was like another living room area, with an old-time bedroom connected to it with dolls and glass tea sets. Oddly enough, that's the room that I felt the safest in. Off of the living room area was a long hallway that led to my aunt and uncle's room. I was laying in bed watching my favorite movie, Mary Poppins. It was at least 9pm at night. Bedtime for a child like me, right? I fell asleep during the movie. I woke up with the TV off and to a room that was completely pitch black. The door was open and I could barely see the staircase leading down. I tried to close my eyes so that I wouldn't be so scared, but what happened next? I can never forget. I heard footsteps coming up the stairs, and they weren't heavy, so I knew that they weren't my aunt or uncle. In fact, it sounded like a child walking up the steps. I hid under the covers and hoped that it would go away. The footsteps came all the way up the stairs, across the room, and stood right next to my bed. I tried very hard to be still and quiet. Finally, the entity turned away, and I heard the little steps go back down the stairs. I was really relieved, until I heard them ascend the staircase once more. I was so scared I wanted to scream for my aunt, but she was so far away she wouldn't have been able to hear me anyway. It came back into the room again. As I hid under the covers for the second time, it came and stopped by the other side of the bed, closest to me. I felt it tug on my blanket, and then it turned away and walked back down the stairs. So this time I got smart, or stupid. I don't know, you can decide that for yourself. Once I heard that it was far enough away, I jumped out of bed. I opened the baby gate, and I ran all the way to my aunt and uncle's room and crawled into bed with them. Let me tell you, I scared the crap out of them. Once they finally made room for me, I got all cozy, but I couldn't sleep. Anyway, it was about a minute after I got into bed with them that I heard the baby gate slam. I was so terrified, but at least I was with my aunt and uncle. The next morning, I woke up in their bed alone upstairs. Now, you might not believe this, but I don't really care if you do or not, but I woke up to three scratches on my chest and they were very painful. To this day, nobody really believes me that it happened, besides my best friend. This event still haunts me. I don't really talk to people about it because nobody ever believes me and I don't want to get ridiculed, but I just had to vent. Whatever it was, I still don't know. A demon posing as a child? Probably. Something evil? That's for sure. But I guess I'll never really know. I grew up in a haunted house. I have so many stories. But this one was on my mind today. Sidebar. Most of the encounters revolve around my brothers. I believe that my middle brother has abilities, and I believe that my youngest brother, who is also autistic, is a medium. I'm a little sensitive, but nothing like them. One particular evening, my teenaged brother and two of his buddies were hanging out at my parents' house and nobody was there but them. My brother got a phone call from a girl, so he went upstairs to his room, leaving the two friends downstairs. When he came back down about 15 minutes later, he found the house completely quiet and totally dark. The TV had been turned off and the lights as well. 
He said that the only light was the last little bit of dwindling daylight trickling through the windows and the glass on the front door. He started laughing and calling for his friends, thinking that they were hiding from him and playing a joke. He walked through the downstairs, room by room, but couldn't find them. He started feeling really nervous, so he began trying to call his friends, but they weren't answering, and he couldn't hear their phones ringing from where he was. He went and checked upstairs to see if maybe they'd snuck past him and were hiding, but they were nowhere. By now, he said the entire vibe of the whole house had changed. He was feeling very anxious. He ran down the stairs and exited the front door directly across from the steps on the front porch, leaving the front door slightly open. As soon as he stepped outside, the front door slammed, and something from the inside of the house started banging on the door with great force and intensity. It really scared him, and he was also getting irritated, so he opened the door to confront his friends. He was laughing, saying, Oh, ha ha, okay, y'all got me. But inside, the house was silent and still. It was at that point that he heard a car door shut in the cul-de-sac, and he turned around only to see his friends arriving at the house. They told him that they had left when he took that phone call and ran to the gas station. They swore on their lives that they knew nothing about the door. This is another story from my haunted house. This is about my youngest brother that I mentioned in part one. He's 10 years younger than me and has Asperger's syndrome. Everyone in my immediate family is 100% convinced that he's a medium. I think that's why our house is haunted, because I had a dream about that. I think they're drawn to him. Anyway, when he was maybe three or four, he was pretty developmentally delayed. He could speak, but he chose what he spoke about very carefully, and that was usually only his two special interests, Toy Story and the aliens that came to talk to him at night. There was a nursing home being converted into an antique mall in my hometown, and one afternoon, my mom went down there, with my brother in tow, to see about renting the space. The second they walked in the door, my almost non-verbal brother said, This place is haunted, and was totally fascinated. He wasn't scared at all. He took off running through the halls while my mom spoke with the owner about rates. He eventually found his way back to my mom and would not stop tugging on her until she acknowledged him. When she spoke to him, he started telling her and the owner about all the ghosts that were there. He said that they were all old people and that they were really bored. He said one old man was quite weird. The owner actually verified this by saying multiple contractors had quit because they said it was haunted. Another example. My mom loves yard sales and would sometimes have estate sales for people for a profit. She had trouble finding a daycare that would accommodate my brother, so he was usually with her. She had an estate sale for a lady that was referred to her by an acquaintance. While preparing for the sale, she purchased a gorgeous bedroom set that ended up being my bedroom set. After their sale, she met with whom she thought was the homeowner to pick up the bedroom suite. They were standing in the bedroom chatting when the husbands were disassembling the furniture and my then seven-ish year old brother comes running in, saying that the sweet old lady in the kitchen gave him some cookies and that they were very delicious. My mom looked at the lady, who then burst into tears. She said that this was her mom's house, and that her mom had recently passed. The neighborhood kids always called her the cookie lady, and would often ring her doorbell in hopes of receiving a cookie, which she was always happy to provide. Such a sweet little quip. There are also darker stories from this house, but always nice to end on a bright note once in a while. So, I've never been the kind of person to believe in ghosts. I'm a non-religious guy. But I've seen some odd things in my 26 years. Nothing to convince me 100% that the paranormal is legit. However, I have one interesting experience that tends to get interest every time I tell it, and honestly, has made me question my stance on the paranormal ever since. About six years ago, I was a 20-year-old student living in London. 
My latest flat contract had run out, and I needed a place to live ASAP. I had very little money, and felt guilty needing my parents to be a guarantor, so, as any broke Londoner would do, I googled the cheapest place possible, somewhere I could move into that day or the next. That's how last minute this was. I was fortunate, or in actual fact, misfortunate, to find a place available to move in that day. Contract signed, I had a place to live. I moved into this detached house with all my stuff the following day. It was a dirty house, but the flat occupants were all 20 to 30 year olds, four of them, and very friendly. The area was quiet, and I felt reasonably comfortable. The house was always damp and cold. It was autumn, so it's not surprising, but it was always an unpleasant atmosphere. The garden was overgrown and creepy. The windows that faced it were scratched, cracked, and looked very dirty. The hallway lights didn't work, so the entire interior of the living room and hallways connecting to the rooms were pitch black at night. The bathroom was just something else. On my first night after speaking to one of my new flatmates, I was told that they have all experienced weird noises, especially scratching on the blackened window in the bathroom. I laughed this off as utter nonsense. Probably just a tree brushing it when it gets windy outside, I thought. So after a couple of weeks, I finally started noticing weird occurrences in the building. My room's window faced the driveway, and I liked to keep my curtains closed, just because it was west-facing and I didn't like the sunlight pouring in and blinding me every morning. So I would close the curtains in the morning, head to class, come home, and find the curtains opened more than halfway. This wasn't a one-time occurrence. This happened every day. In fact, I could come home from class, close them again, go out to work or see friends, and come home to open curtains. Yet when I was in the room for hours on end, they never moved. A bit weird, but whatever. My windows were closed and locked, and so was the bedroom door when I wasn't there, and I was the only one with the key, I hope. Above me was an attic. Nobody lived up there. It was a locked storage room. But at night, I could hear what sounded like feet stomping, two people walking around, kids running, and sometimes whispers. A bit freaky, but I thought maybe someone in the house had access to this room and was using it at night, for who knows what. But no one was up there. The room was locked. I would sometimes go up at night and go to the door and try to get a sense of who the hell was in there, but no luck. I never saw anything, but I could always hear these footsteps. One of my flatmates was a very religious man. I could hear him praying at least five times a day, and he was always very friendly and open to talk about his faith and to listen to me stress out about the awful state of the house. But he himself didn't hear or notice anything weird, other than the unhygienic state of the place. He decided at one point to head home to Algeria for a few months, with his room locked. After six to seven weeks of living there, one of the other occupants moved out, and a room was available there. I told a friend of mine that was as desperate as I had been weeks prior, and he moved in within a few days. Things were great. We worked and went to the same uni, so it was cool hanging out with a friend. I told him the stories. Due to his religious beliefs, he wasn't a believer in ghosts, and like me, he wasn't phased by the stories. But he began to notice oddities too. The same stomping noises upstairs, the scratching windows, my curtains opening on their own. He felt like he was being watched all the time. He noticed the shed in the garden had a broken panel, and could easily imagine someone being inside, sometimes watching us in the kitchen when we made food. Routine pest control opened the shed during a visit one day and found half a dozen dead rats and a pile of hollowed out bees in there. Creepy, but no monsters, right? My friend and I were eating dinner after work in the kitchen one night 
I was facing him and the door to the hallway, whilst he was facing myself and the sliding glass door that gave access to the overgrown jungle garden behind. I remember him turning pale, jumping to his feet, and asking me in a very frightened tone, Can you come into my room? I laugh and asked why. He said, Seriously, can you please just come to my fucking room? It's not a joke. Then he bolted to his room like he was running away from something. I finished my sandwich with the last bite, didn't even think to turn around to see what he was so spooked about. Got to his room, and he locked the door, sat on its bed, and turned on his PlayStation. After a few minutes, he calmed down, and as he started playing, he told me that he saw something in the garden. A woman in a white dress. She walked across the garden, half a meter from the glass, almost floated past, he said, and then she vanished. He kept repeating, we have to leave, we have to leave. And that the noises were one thing, but that when you see something, everything changes. My room scarred him, and everyone else, the most. Another flatmate told us they thought they'd seen me in my room peering at them on the driveway through a 20 centimeter gap in my curtains one night. They said they saw the shape of a person's head. The only thing was, I wasn't there that night, or on any of those occasions mentioned, and I certainly don't peer at people through my window. After that, things got worse. Two nights after the kitchen incident, I'm woken up at around 3 or 4 in the morning. My friend is banging on my door in the pitch blackness of the hallway. I open it, and he comes in shaking with fear, saying his bed was vibrating and moving, and that he can't stay here any longer. The next day, he speaks to a friend, he has a place to stay, so he packs up most of his stuff, and he's gone. Within a few days, another person left. A little creeped out, but mostly annoyed with the poor state of the house. At this point, the remaining occupants and I are all looking for alternative living arrangements. Remember the religious guy that went back to Algeria? Well, he's been gone for months now, and hasn't returned. The landlord makes a visit once a day, and he has a spare key, so he decides to inspect the room to make sure all is okay. So he opens it up and we go in. His room was amazing. It was warm, cozy, not damp or cold. It was honestly like a different house altogether. It was really nice, and I really don't know how to explain that. Finally, I had decided to move in with my partner, who had avoided this house the entire time I'd lived there, maybe visiting once or twice. She hated it, hated being there, and always felt uncomfortable. On my last night, I again heard weird noises, but this time in the hall. I was aware that I was home alone that night, as the only other flatmate left was on holiday. It was, as it always was, very dark when I opened the door. Nobody was there. I walked into the living room, and the window at the back that faced the side of the house was making weird scratching noises. I needed to use the bathroom, and as a necessity, I had to carry a flashlight to do the job during these hours. I walked into the bathroom, did my business, and as I'm zipping up my pants, my flashlight briefly shines over the window. For some reason I looked, almost as if I was expecting to see something. I didn't. I walked out of the room, and I don't know why, but I decided to look at that window once more without the light. I saw the shape of a large man. I went back to my room and locked the door. All night, I heard feet stomping upstairs in the attic. I couldn't sleep, so I moved all my things into a pile in the middle of the room, sat on the bed, and waited for sunrise. I got a taxi first thing in the morning, and finally got the hell out of there.